What's happening, everybody? It's your man, Dame DNYDC, host of the Two Mics Up podcast. Back to, back today with my co-host, Lisa Middleton, and we have, you know, a really... I, I'm excited today, Lisa, because one, we're talking about how to make your, that spice that goes in the food, and you know we like to eat. Well, I know I like to eat. I'm not going to speak for you. I like to eat. Well, and... you could clearly see that. <laughs> you know, for me. <laughs> well, and, and the second part is, though, the, the gentleman that's on here is, is family. Uh, you know, he is an extension of my family. Um, he's an Afro-Latino. And I'm just excited. I've been working on this for for about a month, month or two now. And finally got this man on. And... I know, at least this is kind of in your wheelhouse because you too, quiet as a cap. You know, you're a chef. Quiet you do your thing cap. in the kitchen too, sis. Quiet as it's kept, right? Because we got to get you back out there. But quiet <laughs> as it's kept. Listen, you know, you, right? <laughs> I, I'm so excited. Well, first, let me say hi, everyone. Hi, listeners. Glad you're back. Um, first, I want to say that I'm excited. Um, number one, because. I too have um, went through culinary school, so I know what it takes. I mean, the glamour, everyone likes that chef, but it's a <laughs> lot of hard work and you let me explain, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why for me it's quiet as it's kept because <laughs> the work that goes into it and um, I appreciate our guest today because mm -hmm. coming up with your own blend. So, you know, to make things palatable, you know, for your palate and to make mm -hmm. it work and success, it's really not um, as easy as the Food Network and all of these things. That they <laughs> okay. <can look> like. <laughs> so I'm excited for this show today because I really can relate. <laughs> right. Awesome. Well, Without further ado, I'm going to back away from the mic. I'm going to ask this this gentleman, you know, Mr. Richard Taylor, please introduce yourself to our audience and our and those who are watching. Give us a little background about yourself. Well, um, again, my name is Richard Taylor, uh, Afro Latino, born and raised in uh, in in the Caribbean coast of Costa Rica. Uh, Hence the name of the company is Tico Rico. Tico comes from, you know, they call Costa Ricans Ticos. I, I can't tell you exactly why it is, <laughs> but I know it's something that I, since I've been around my 50 some odd years on this planet, I've known Costa Ricans as being called Ticos. Hence the name Tico Rico. Rico means rich. My name is rich. So that the name of the, of the company became a, a play on words. So Tico meaning Costa Rican, Rico meaning rich. Rich uh, Costa Rica means rich coast, mm -hmm. and again, because my name is Rich, it just it's it's just a, a play on words and kind of yeah, you know, so that, that's how it, that's how the name came about, you know. Um, however, you know, I grew up again in the Caribbean side of Costa Rica. Um, um, learned to cook from my grandmother way back in the day, and uh, you know, I, I I'm one of those people who um, I love to create I, I'm, I'm a mad scientist let's put it that way <laughs> um so so you know um a lot of creations that i come up with are just take a little bit of this a little bit of that and throw it together and voila this is what you get um, i'm all about flavor mm -hmm. and, and as far as the hot sauce is concerned um i love hot mm. it, it, it can be as spicy as it wants to be but but don't burn me for no good reason. Right, you right, right. Some flavor, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, sometimes you get it, somebody tells you, oh, you, you eat hot sauce, let's try this, you know? And, mm -hmm. and I taste it, I'm like, there's no taste to it except just the burn. Right. And then I can't taste anything else. Right. And so that's how this whole thing was born. I was trying to make sure that, you know, I could put something together that, that had both flavor and heat, mm. but palatable heat, not heat that just shuts down everything else. After right. you taste the first little bit, you can't taste the rest of your food. Were, right, wow. right. You know, and 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 Elisa, you probably know well since you you know you you know something about the culinary industry is you know flavor is everything. Everything. You know, and mm -hmm. I want to do flavor without a ton of fat, without a ton of sugar, and without a ton of 
of sodium. Mm. And so that was the whole premise behind this whole thing. So, wow. you know, that's how it was born, kind of, you know. Uh -huh. um, I have more stories, so but I'm going <laughs> to let you go ahead and tell me where you want to go. But um, no. but seriously, that's that's how it, it is. And, and like I said, uh, Lisa, you know, you know, in the culinary industry, everything is about flavor. But in order to get flavor, so many things are pushed. And again, those three mm -hmm. demons that I mentioned, right. <laughs> sugar, salt, and fat mm -hmm. and so you know i mean fat is flavor that's what you hear all the right. time right you know and so i i again in doing this i wanted flavor i wanted you know heat and i also wanted help to be honest with you wow and so well, how, that's how that whole thing came together so you then know, uh -huh. go ahead Lee. Sorry, Dave, no go ahead no, go. You go know ahead. what's so interesting in what you just said is that mm -hmm. it is push, right? Mm -hmm. And when you uh you know learn the skill of cooking and blending mm -hmm. spices, you really find that um we think that salt mm -hmm. is a flavor and it is right. not. Right. right? Yep. Because you can make something <clears throat> tasty um, because uh, the actual spices, the herbs, the blend mm -hmm. of each of them, you know, mm -hmm. makes the flavor. But right. then Absolutely. when you saturate it with salt, you can appreciate the blend. blend. Yeah. Now all you taste is salt. Or you can't appreciate the blend because it's so hot that mm -hmm. you do not have yeah. any flavor. And I think that that's what we are accustomed salt Come to flavor and salt right. does not equal flavor and nope. hot does not <laughs> equal flavor right right it is um salt should just be a backup us uh, uh, you know a little enhancement that's mm -hmm. exactly it not exactly be. when you read the back of a uh ingredient bottle if salt is the first thing on the back of that bottle get rid of it, it <laughs> get it. rid of it right away <laughs> get rid of it yeah and if it says sodium or salt the first ingredient on the back of that bottle then you can negate mm. everything that comes behind it because you're not going to taste none of that stuff mm. well, you see it. and that goes into the the whole thing of how some of this stuff has to come together because um i when i when i put this together I, I mean i was a rookie as far as knowing how to do labeling and all that kind of stuff and one of the first things that i did i i put the ingredients together the person that was doing the labeling for me told me put the ingredients together and just send it to me hmm. and when they did it they sent me you know they did the label the label was perfect as far as the look and everything was concerned but when i looked at my ingredients and actually to be honest with you i didn't notice it because i was so excited about the whole premise of having my own brand that I that I didn't even pay close attention as a chef mm. to this label. And on the label, the first thing that was listed was uh, vinegar. And so everybody, when they saw it, a couple of people who know about, you know, labeling and stuff, they're like, wait a minute, why is the first ingredient vinegar? Is that what it's all about? Is it going to be all vinegar? I'm like, oh, no, you know, the first mm. ingredient has to be the the, the, the base, the, the base, which and, and the pepper that I'm using, which is the habanero and the first one. And um, and, and it, it like clicked. I'm like, gee, you know, as much as I know about culinary arts, you know, you miss certain things when getting into a venture that you have no experience with as far as branding is concerned. Wow. And so that was huge. And 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 so it, it just speaks to the 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 amount of things that you have to do to make it work. Mm. as far as putting a business or putting a brand on you know out oh, there for people there, to see. Right. you know it's 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 really not an easy thing mm. you know it's it's a lot of work that comes along with it all people see is the finished pro finished product right, right. oh right. i love this and oh yeah that's easy you know but mm -hmm. is it really easy or mm. you know or i make it look that way because of what i put out there for you to see right. you know what i mean and you know people you know Everything starts with, with with that site. What you see, it looks like, you know, the mm -hmm. look of it is what first attracts you to it. Yep. At, at right. the end All of day. the day, that's how it goes, you know. Yep. Um, and so, you know, it starts with the eye, then with the taste. And then, you know, you, you make up your mind at that point based on the taste. Your taste is going to rule at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. However, 
the first thing that's going to draw you to it is what you see. You see, yeah. And if you don't like what you see, you're not going to even look at it. You're going to be like, oh, whatever, you know. Right. So getting getting this whole labeling and that that whole thing together was also a special process that you know. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Well, then I'm going to just jump in. Then so mm -hmm. we we've covered some of the things, and you know, you mentioned you know your grandmother and things like that. Mm -hmm. But let's dive into that. What what actually. You know, give us a little more details. What inspired you to actually want to become a chef? Oh man, um, you know, I've I, I've always uh, I grew up again on the Caribbean side of Costa Rica. My grandmother, who 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 raised me, um, mm -hmm. she um, she's the one that I, I you know I um, I kind of credit this chef thing to. She I used to follow her around in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry about that, y'all. I gotta cut this cut this out real quick. <laughs> um, you know how it is. Um, yeah. So, um, she, I used to follow her around in the kitchen. Um, for selfish re selfish reasons. Okay. Um, if if you follow her around in the kitchen, she would be you'd be her taster. You know, so from like I was five, six years old, I'm following her around. You know, there were 11 of us. We grew up very humble beginnings. There were 11 of us in the house. And in order to, you know, survive, it was survival of the fittest. And I was the only boy. There were 11 oh. of us and I was the only boy. Wow. So instinctively, I knew I had to work to get where I needed to get to. And and one of the things that I always did was, uh, you know, hang out with grandma in the kitchen. And I was the first one to ch taste stuff all the time. So, <laughs> so, so, you know, I was, I was getting all these flavors and I, and I got interested while, while in there with her, just kind of paying attention and watching things that she was doing. And one of the things that I learned is she didn't use a lot of oil and a lot of, uh, you know, all the fatty stuff that makes stuff delicious. What I saw mm -hmm. her do was, and matter of fact, she used to use me because we had a lot of herbs and spices in the backyard and she would say oh go outside and get me a, a you know a little bunch of you know time mm -hmm. you know what time looks like right <laughs> you know at age five six and she would always show me and tell me okay this is what time looks like this is what uh, lemongrass looked like um you know and all these different things so whenever she needed something she would she'd say okay richard go get it and i would run <laughs> outside and run around and grab the stuff and i couldn't wait to get back inside because what was going to be created from this stuff is, is I was very interested in. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's where I learned how to put, you know, flavors together um, with just herbs and spices. Wow. You know? um, and that, that had to be a, an amazing experience as a young man. And then to take that, you know, into your adult life and then mm -hmm. to proceed through culinary school I kind of mm -hmm. now I'm getting a, a, a fuller picture uh, <laughs> of of some of you know the conversations that we've had, right, right. But even to a a, a larger extent, you know, again as an Afro Latino, you mm -hmm. know, what what would you say uh, is the most important thing maybe you've learned in your life, you know, from your experiences, and how have you been able to use that knowledge to uh, ref develop and refine, I guess, you know, Tico Rico hot sauce. So, you know, number one, coming from a, you know, coming from a Latin American country mm -hmm. as a black man mm. was really um, something else. I had uh, my father, when I first came to the United States, I moved to New York, my father and his wife and, and my brothers and sisters, that's where they lived. And uh, I, I was 16 years old when I left um, Costa Rica. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I learned was, you know, um, one of the things that I learned was, you know, um, my father said to me, okay, son, you have two strikes. Mm -hmm. He said, do you like baseball? I said, I love baseball. So you got two strikes. You're black and you're Latino. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I always wondered, you know, I was always a very positive thinking person. Right. And so I thought, eh, what does he mean by that? You know, mm -hmm. and 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 after being here for a couple of months in the United States, <laughs> I realized exactly what what he meant. Especially living in New York, the the one thing I do love about New York is that the people are pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. If somebody is racist towards you, you know it right off the bat because they'll let you know okay. in their action or whatever they say to you. So I love that about it because it was right. I didn't have to you know guess. 
okay, is this person this or is that person that? And so as, as an Afro-Latino coming to the country, I, that's the first first thing that I learned when I got here, you know, and, and that was educational for me. And it also prepared me for dealing with just people in general and, 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 and culinary arts. You know, people expect what they expect when they when they when they come into a restaurant or they come into an establishment mm. where you're preparing food. Right. It, it it taught me that I need to be good enough to, you know, you know, to encompass everything as mm -hmm. far as culinary arts is concerned. Learn as much as I could of the art itself um, to be able to, you know, to really get to my fullest potential. To be honest mm. with you. Okay. Um, so, so you know, as an Afro Latino, it was it was difficult because I had to learn a lot of different things. Again, um, the easy part for me was the cooking because because <laughs> it's something I love, you know, right. and I and I grew up doing it with my grandmother, and so that was the easy part for me. Um, having gone to cul culinary school um, really enhanced the 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 the. The simple parts of cooking that people don't think about, the prep time, mm. the, the 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 tool usage, you know, using your tools like your knives and your different tools that you have in, in, in the kitchen. That's what, that's, I already knew how to cook when I went to culinary school. I went to culinary school later on in life. I went to culinary school, I was 30, 30 almost 40 years old, actually. Wow. When I wow. first went to culinary school. I had a, I'd been cooking for 35 years prior to that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, as five years old, my grandmother used to have me do certain things in the kitchen. So as far as I'm concerned, that's where it started. Right. So, you know, going to culinary school, you know, I, I thought, why do I need to go to culinary school? I know how to cook already. But I learned so much, I, 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 you know, in, in the classes that I took and um, prepping, presentation, you know that whole thing, but the the biggest thing for me was the was the tool usage, the skills, mm. and how much easier it made things, and the prep, how to prep stuff so that it makes the job. You know, my my wife can cook; mm -hmm. she'll tell you she can't cook, okay, but she can cook. However, you know, since I'm a chef, you know, she right. always, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you put all this stuff together. And I don't know how you cook for so many people. I don't know how you cook so many things and make mm. it all come together. And how, how are six things going at the same time? Um, I knew how to do certain things, but putting six items together simultaneously, um, I learned that in culinary school, how to manage my time. And so yeah. those are the skills that I learned when going to culinary school. Wow. You know. Absolutely. So. I, I can relate to that because, mm -hmm. right, you, we've all, I mean, I, I think that um, being, you know, um, Afro-Latina and then African-American, we have mm -hmm. those heritage, right? We have mm -hmm. the passed down um, recipes and the knowledge mm -hmm. because we know we've seen our parents, grandparents, our elders, um, auntie, uncles, right. you know, they get in the kitchen or barbecues and you make mm -hmm. things happen and you pick up those skills. And then when you get to culinary school, it's like measure, Huh? Yeah. <laughs> like, like I, I was I was very excited for the tool usage. Yes, I was, but the most mm -hmm. difficult uh thing that I had was breaking old habits. Mm -hmm. Um and that was measuring, you know, mm -hmm. learning how to properly, like you say, put six things together at the precise measurement mm -hmm. to make these things like sing. Because right. <laughs> you, you know, we grew up, we didn't measure anything. Well, at least I, right. I, 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 a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah. Yeah. That should be enough, you know, mm -hmm. and that looks like mm -hmm. enough, so a little bit more water. But when you, when you learn the precision mm -hmm. of, you know, putting your spices together or putting six ingredients together at the precise measurement, to make mm -hmm. this because if even if you off by mm -hmm. um you know less time or more time it will change the entire taste of a mm -hmm. situation right mm -hmm. so it mm -hmm. was that was one of the things that um 
that um and, and also time management because once you've done your prep the cooking is better the part the cooking part is easy it's the prep yeah. you right, right. Be prepping for something forever but long as you <laughs> measure it out and you're ready to go it's like a symphony you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and onions and now they right. Have, you know? right. well you'll know this term in, in in culinary school one of the things that they the first things they tell you is mise en place Mm -hmm. And mise en place just means everything in its place. Pre right. Be prepared and have everything in its place so that, you know, when it's time to actually start creating, you know, everything is right there and you can just throw this here and throw this there. But the prepping part of it is so important, you know, mm -hmm. and people don't, that's the one thing that people don't think about. People don't understand, and you mentioned this earlier in, in, in your uh, conversation, uh, Damon, that people don't understand what it takes. Mm -hmm. To, to to make you know good food happen right again they go and they buy their stuff and it comes out and they're like man that was so good they have no idea mm -hmm. the amount of things that you have to do in the kitchen for that one thing that you just got right to come to the place that it's at at mm -hmm. the moment that you get it right. and so you know that's the part that most people miss they're like oh cooking I can do that I can yeah, oh, Look. yeah you you can cook but Look, I tell anybody, look, I know my place in the kitchen. And my place in the kitchen is at the table. There you go. I, I will taste everything that you want. That's right. <laughs> not a problem. Now, I'm, right. I'm, not, I'm not afraid not to say that I can't cook. Exactly. I exactly. cook well. But right. look, I know my place. I'm really behind the bar. You can catch me at the bar. You can catch me on the grill. But if you That's want right. me in the kitchen, put a plate in front of me with, with the utensils. I'll tell you everything you need to know. Right, mm -hmm. right, right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and, and where you're at, um, Richard, in your level of creating, right? So now it's another thing to follow another chef's recipe when you're working um, in these restaurants. They, these recipes are already laid out. So um, you're, you're actually, you know, following, you know, just following the recipe like you do at home. And mm -hmm. someone has already painstakingly put this recipe together with many, 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 many failures to mm. get to where you're at. So it just intrigues me that you took this process and created this amazing sauce, right? This amazing, this amazing hot sauce. How many how long did it take? What was the process? How long did it take you to get there um, in developing this product? Okay, so again, um, I love spice. I love heat. And so um, I've always put together little, um, you know, pepper sauces, as we call them. You know, I used to make my own all the time because I used to watch my grandmother do it. There are different types of peppers, like the scotch bonnet pepper, which is very prevalent in Caribbean cooking. Mm -hmm. um, and then in Costa Rica, there is a pepper, which is, is, is kind of a cousin of the scotch bonnet, which we call it the Panama pepper. Um, and, and that particular pepper has a, a flavor of a scotch bonnet, a little heat from the habanero. And when you put them together, they just, it's a symphony. They just, mm -hmm. and so whoever did that blend was, was a genius. And so, I used to watch my grandmother make these little sauces. She would chop up vegetables and she used to make her own vinegar. The best vinegar I've ever tasted in my life is, is banana vinegar. Mm -hmm. And it's, you ferment the banana for a number of months and it's not a pretty process, but the vinegar is delicious. And so she used to put these sauces together and I I watched and saw her do them and, and, and then Later on, as you get older and you start figuring out certain flavors and certain spices, you start adding your own flair to it. And, you know, that's the way out, you know, we kind of get to, to, to flavoring and putting a, a product out. However, the root of your question, though, Elisa, is, is how did this, this sauce come together and the flavoring and the whole deal? I used to work as a chef at a, um, a country club in in illinois and uh there's lots of doctors that come in to play golf and what have you and the indian doctors of course were there all the time and you know india is a place where spice is everything mm -hmm. heat right. is everything and so they used to come in and they'll be like okay let me get one of this one of that one of the other um do you have any hot sauce what kind of hot sauce do you have 
And obviously all I could offer them was the, the regulars of Tapatio, Cholula, Tabasco, <laughs> pretty much, or Red Hot. You know, right, that's, right. Not yeah. Yeah. that's not the sauce that they're looking for. When they no, when they're, they're looking for flavor and they want heat. And they mm -hmm. want heat. They yes. want heat. Yes. And so yes. they used to come in all the time and that's what they would ask for. So one day, in my infinite wisdom, I'm on my way to work and I said, you know what? Let me grab some peppers and bring in and try some of the sauces that I used to, you know, dabble in, you know, growing up, you know, watching my grandmother throw them together. And we didn't have a blender, but she would, I, you know, I was her blender. I would chop yeah. stuff up for her and she would, you know, just put it together. And I, I, I remember picking up some habanero peppers and uh, going into work. And while I was at work, I started throwing them in the, in the blender that we had there. Mm. I threw peppers in, I started throwing, you know, carrots and onions and all sorts of stuff in there. I blended it up with a little vinegar, tasted pretty good. Nah, it needs a little bit of salt, put a little salt in there, uh, tasted pretty good. Added a little oil, tasted pretty good. And then I said, oh, wait a minute now, what's missing? There's something missing. So I threw a little mustard in there just to mm. see what it would do. Mm -hmm. And the color shocked me. It came out kind of yellow and you know, you don't see too many yellow sauces, except in the right. Caribbean. They do have right. some. Except for Caribbean. Yeah. Exactly. And mm -hmm. so I said, you know what? That's that's home. That felt like home to me. Mm -hmm. So I put it together and I tasted it. And I was like, oh, you know what? This is pretty darn good. So later on in the day, of course, they come in from their round of golf and they ordered their usual stuff. And they're like, hey, uh, you got some hot stuff? I said, yeah, I got something special for you. And I brought it out. And I brought out a couple of ramekins of the stuff that I made and I put it on the table and I walked away. Less than a minute later, I started hearing, whoa, man. <laughs> oh my God, what, 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 Rich, come here, man. I go back over, <laughs> they're like, what is this? Where did you buy it? I want to buy some. And I said, no, I didn't buy it. I made it. I just made it. Mm. They're like, yeah, nah, come on, man. Seriously, <laughs> seriously, where did you buy this stuff? We want to buy some. I said, no, I'm serious. I just made it. Wow. And they said, man, well, you need to start bottling this stuff. And I and I, and I said stuff just to not use the words that they used. Um, <laughs> but they're like, you need to start bottling this stuff. He said, this stuff has got the perfect amount of heat. It's got so much flavor. It lingers just enough. And mm -hmm. and and then you then you can start again, mm -hmm. and and I can still taste everything else. And they're like, "This is it. You need to bottle this stuff." Yep. And sure enough, that's how it was born. I started. I decided. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do something about this. I'm gonna start bottling this stuff. And uh, my son uh, Brian, who was not was not able to be here today, he he he's the one that kind of encouraged me to put it in these bottles. He started researching to see what he could do. He started putting labels together and, you know, trying to create something. And he was pretty young at the time. He might've been, I don't know, 19, 20. Wow. Um, and he's like, oh man, um, I'll help you with this. And he started putting something together. So I want to show you something real quick. Yeah. This bottle right here, is the original oh, label. Hold it up just a little bit, label. Rich. Hold it up. Right. Hold it up. Hold it up, Rich. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Right there. That mm -hmm. was the original label that he put together for me. Wow. Wow. He wow. made this. Wow. Okay. And so I, I kept this bottle because I just thought, you know what? This is where it all started. That's where it all started. Yes, indeed. So, you know, so I started throwing them in, in these bottles, five, five ounce Uzi hot sauce bottles. Mm -hmm. And I uh, just, you know, just started it this way and started selling it to the Indian doctors there. And then people would hear about it. And, you know, people started hearing about this hot sauce and it was different and it was, you know, it looked like looks different and what's the deal with it. And, and these guys just kept saying, man, y'all don't know. Yeah. And, and so that's really how it was born. Wow. You know? And, and then I started, you know, trying to put flavors and stuff together and, um, you know, just trying to figure out how to, you know, make these combinations and, and, you know, I, I always experimented with stuff and, but I was working some crazy hours all the time. So I really never had the time to really dedicate to making it my thing. Mm -hmm. Plus as humans, we're, we're always, you know, we're always afraid to make that, that take that leap. Right. Which is our worst, our, our own worst enemy is, 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 is just, just doing it, you know, it's right. like just jump. 
just jump. You know, you, mm -hmm. you you figure out a way to land softly. You know what I mean? And if you land hard, you get up, you brush it off, and you and you try again and try jump it again. again until you get it. You know, you know how many people see this stuff and they think it it's like, oh yeah, most of these sauces they didn't just happen overnight. It didn't it didn't just happen like that. They put it together and boom, went to market mm -hmm. and boom, it became a uh, a wild success. No, they failed a hundred times before they they made that yeah. one successful. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. But most people, again, they they they're so f fixated on that first taste yep. that they get, and they think, oh yeah, that person did it, and this is a, yep. you know, and everybody think they can just jump in. One of the things that I learned in culinary art school, especially with when it comes to food, it's most culinary, most restaurants, for example, I can do that. Most restaurants. And that was back in 2000. 80% of all restaurants that open would fail within the first five years. Mm -hmm. That, that right. was back then. It's right. even less now. It's like within the first two years. Wow. Just about 80 to 85% of restaurants that open fail. Wow. Because it's not easy. Most people think, oh, man, you know, it's so easy. You it's know? not. It seems so right. simple. Mm. And, that's, and that's, you know, so. That's definitely not. Mm -mm, that's not the case right. at all. That's right. not the case at all. Even being a chef is not easy because, first of all, the amount of hours you spend on your feet, mm. the amount of actual uh, labor, the toll that it takes on your body, because um, you are, you know, carrying these big, gigantic pots, you know what I mean? And you're lifting, you're standing, you're cutting, you're constantly moving, bending over. And not only the cooking thing, it's also the management of the actual products. So you still have to do inventory. You still have to be there early when your shipment comes in, make sure that it's correct. You still mm -hmm. got to clean out the freezer to make sure mm -hmm. that your food that is in there is sustainable that is you know it's just a whole, whole situation that comes with that yes you get good finished product but behind right. the scenes you think that your chef is back there just like la, la, la. people have no idea <laughs> people have no idea <laughs> right oh yeah oh yeah by the time you by the time you received your food um, your chef probably was there at least 12 hours before your food came. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Or more, because yeah. they do oh, absolutely. 18 hour days. And then, you know, because it's so much more to that. Like, mm. it, it, it's just so much more. I'm glad that, you know, you guys make it look glamorous and people. Right. right. Well, right. see, that's. Book to come in. But, right. but that's key. That's key because, again, you know, and especially when you're managing too, because I, I was at that level, I was managing 16, 17 people at a time, um, different shifts, different days, all that stuff. And having people, you know, that that's in there, a lot of people, you know, a lot in, in the industry, you find a lot of people who come in and, you know, it, it's, it's, it's hard labor. You know, people are paid very little money in the industry. Mm. And so, you know, you're asking people to put in, 10 hours, 12 hours, 14 hours sometimes if there is a big event, 16 wow. hours that you put in, everybody else is putting in at least 10. Mm. And nobody wants to do that for the kind of prices, you know, the kind of money that they're getting paid. And so you have to litigate that too. You have to be able to get people to to do the work and want to do the work. And you want, you know, you, when you have that many people working for you, you know, you have different personalities, you have different issues, you know, um, so you have to be careful because one person can mess it all up for you. Mm. And when you have a big event going on, there, there's nothing that could go wrong by the time that stuff has to go out there. Right. And so <laughs> it, it's there is so much stress. Um, there were 16, 17, 18 hour days that I put in sometimes. And um, thankfully, my better half, my wife, she she understood because she'd seen me do what I do. And so she understood and she dealt with it, but it was tough for a long time. You know, when you're raising a family, young kids, you know, our kids were, were, um, by the time I started culinary school, they were like eight, 10 and 12, you know, at an age where they're really, you know, they need you. Um, I was lucky that I was in a position at the golf club where, um, 
I had put in so much work and time and made it look so good and simple that I was I was able to demand flexibility from management. Mm. And yeah. so there were days where I, I was able to, if, if, you know, my wife was working out of the house at that time. And so she was at work and, you know, she couldn't just leave her job and go home and, you know, because the school called and said, hey, you know, Brian, you know, has got a fever or Brian has got this or, or Kara has got that or Sean has got this. And I had, and I was able, I was flexible enough for the work that I did to be able to leave, go home, have everything set up, have, have a second person there that, 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 you know, I could trust and say, Hey, this is what we need to get done within the next hour and a half. I'll be back. Right. And then I could leave, go home, take care of some business and then run back to work. Those right. are some of the days where I could work 17, 18 hours, but in between I was doing other things at the same mm -hmm. time, you mm -hmm. know? Right. And, um, and thankfully because of my wife and her, you know, you know, when she got home, you know, she held things down and held put it down. together for me so that I right. could I could have the freedom to to run and do what I had to do. So, you know, um that's good. You know, so yeah. That's good. But yeah. Kind of flexibility because some, mm -hmm. people, some know, people never have that. Right. Exactly. So, right. you know, but but as far as the hot sauce is concerned, um it, just like just like um the culinary arts, just like cooking um it, it takes a precision like you mentioned before Alyssa, in blending these things together and the key is doing it over and over and over and having it be exactly the same, same. Yeah. the yeah. only place where i let people understand that it may differ just somewhat is in the heat the level of heat it could be the same exact pepper but the wild peppers grow, like habanero, for example, um, you, you might get a batch of habanero, you buy a batch of habanero today, and the heat level is like way up here. And then you get another batch tomorrow, and it's a little bit lower than that. And so you have to be able to adjust as far as how much you use. So that's also very important and very difficult to do because you want the flavor and heat and all this stuff to be pretty much the same every time. You know, when somebody come, when you go to a restaurant and you order something, you want to make sure that the next time you go back is the exact exactly. same experience right. that you get. Right. And so that's what I do with the hot sauce. I try to make it so that every time it goes out there, when you order it and you love it, I don't want to send you another batch when you order again. And then and I send you something and you're like, wait a minute, this is not mm -hmm. the same taste. So that's really hard to do. And I, I've been blessed enough to be able to accomplish that with, with all the different flavors that we're now, you know. And you know, you speak now. you're speaking about the flavors, uh, but mm -hmm. we're gonna I'm gonna pause for the cause real quick. And okay. we're gonna come back and talk about those. And okay. I'm gonna move over and just talk about our sponsors real quick, uh, who sure. have been kind enough to support two mics up. Uh awesome. we wanna Go ahead and jump in. You know, our friends, Next Level Keys, Riddick Entertainment, TD3 Insurance Agency, and Re Regina Leggett. Um, you know, for those of you, Next Level Keys is a full-service credit repair firm that renders optimum services for people in all walks of life. The goal is to help get you to the next level. Feel free to contact Next Level Keys at support at nextlevelkeys.com. Our friends over at Riddick Entertainment, which is a multifaceted event management firm based here in Northern Virginia. Riddick Entertainment's detailed creativity and precision event planning will truly give truly give you a meaningful event. Check them out at RiddickENT.com. TD3 Insurance, one of our newest sponsors, just opened up here in Woodbridge, Virginia. They are full, fully licensed in D.C., Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, and New York. Stay tuned for more from TD3 Insurance. And last but not least, Re Regina Leggett. She's a Legal Shield Independent Associate. Feel free to contact Regina at reginaleggett.wearelegalshield.com. She can help you with just about anything that's going on in the legal field today. So give her a call today. So back for the second part of our segment. We're here today on two mics up. We're continuing our conversation with Chef Richard Taylor, CEO of Tico Rico Hot Sauce. This man's a chef. 
he he cooks it up and you know i love the tagline and you know today's episode spicy never tasted this good and before the break rich you know you were talking about your hot sauce mm -hmm. and, or your your flavors right let's get into the concept behind those flavors like okay. where did you come up with those concepts and uh, did you match any dishes with that like you know what was behind the thought of these three distinct flavors okay so uh, look look <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, I, like I told you about the, the habanero was my 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 flagship flavor. Mm -hmm. um, that's how it started with with you know the Indian doctors at the at the club. You know, I I used to make that back in the day. It wasn't exactly like I did it for for this particular um, um, sauce. Obviously, I had to work on that, but I used to have a similar flavor that I used to make for myself, just for my enjoyment at home. And uh, and so that's how that whole start that whole thing started with the habanero. Um, last year during the pandemic, mm. um, I started doing um, on some online more online stuff because obviously I couldn't go out, I couldn't do the things that I was normally doing the couple of years before that in 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 trying to launch the brand. And um, my son Brian, who who does all my marketing and things of that nature. He said, Pops, you need to come up with another flavor. I know you are always experimenting, so you know, let's let's get it together and put it together for for you know for the branding. And um, so again, the, the habanero, um, which started with, you know, which started with that with you know, with the, the package that I showed you. Um, what we did in order to um, get this on the market and have it look professional was we we did a, a we 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 hooked up with this company um, that had a bunch of artists, and we sent them our our premise and told them what we wanted it to look like. Not not necessarily this, but but basically told them exactly what the product was and what we were trying to accomplish and what we wanted it to, to look like. And so they gave it to a hundred different artists, and they all presented their 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 product to you know their project to us. And then we eliminated it down to 10. And then from that down to five. And then we had to choose one of the five to come up with this particular label that we have mm. here. So again, it goes back to the process. It, it's not an easy process. It starts, you know, it starts a certain way. And, you know, so so this 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 is how this label came about, uh, which is a far cry from what the other label was. <laughs> but the other label obviously is near and dear to my heart because my of son course. created it. Of so, course. Right. But he is the one that encouraged me because, of course, you know, old school, I wanted to keep it the same. And he's like, no, dad, this is marketing. Exactly. You need yeah. to, it needs to pop. It needs to pop in the, on the shelf. If somebody walks in the store, you want them to look and say, oh, I got to check that out, you know? Right. And that's exactly right. what this label yeah. did. He's, and he's, so he's, this is the habanero. Okay. So at, at that point, he told me, okay, you need to come up with some other flavors. So I started working on on other peppers, uh, and I thought serranos and jalapenos are very popular everywhere in the, in the United States. So how about trying that? And so this is how the serrano line became, you know, reality. Mm -hmm. it, 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 I started messing around and throwing some stuff together. I wanted it to have a kind of the same look as far as the brand is concerned. Right. But but obviously change it up so that it could be distinguishable from the habanero, and so I started throwing together some peppers and I and I threw the the the, the serrano in in the blender and just like I did with the habanero and started throwing stuff together and and keeping it kind of close to similar as far as the the other ingredients by the way which are all vegetables there's no preservatives other than oil and vinegar in this product by the way. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to keep it the same. And so I started throwing it together and I put it together and I tasted it. And I was like, eh, I had my wife taste it. She's my <laughs> usual taste tester. I will see you later. <laughs> so, I tell you. so my wife tasted it and she said, it tastes, it tastes too earthy. Mm. And so now, of course, my ego gets in the way. I'm like, I don't know what she's talking about. I said that to myself, see? Right, um, right, right. right. Um, <laughs> she don't know what she's talking about. I, I don't know why I even asked her. You know, that's right. what I was thinking the whole time. And then finally, I was like, she said, you know, if you put maybe some lemon or lime or something like that in there, it might mm. wake up the flavor, take away that earthiness from it. And I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. And, you know, and again, 
I'm annoyed. I'm like, right. she don't know what she know about this stuff. But quietly, I went ahead mm. and I got some limes <laughs> and I chopped them up <laughs> and threw them in there. And I tasted it and I was like, damn, wait a minute now, hold up for a second. So I had her come back in the kitchen and I said, okay, sweetheart, can you try this? And she tasted it and she said, ooh, now that's a good flavor. So mm -hmm. to be honest with you, I have to credit her for this because she's the one that gave the suggestion. And, okay. and and the one thing I love about, okay, so chefs get a bad reputation of being arrogant and being certain what, I'm not that guy. Mm -hmm. I I'm, I can learn from anyone. It could be a five-year-old. Right. There's nothing that says I can't learn something new every single day from a different person that may yep. not have anything to do with what I do, but yep. can teach me something in life. That's and right. so I learn from from that that you know although i was being stubborn and you know you know the people you love the most are the ones that you, you question the most when they tell you right. stuff right and and it right. turned out that it was a genius idea right and that's how the serrano line was born mm. and so i put it together and then my son who again brian he runs a lot of the stuff he's not that much into heat but he he, he loves the habanero so much that he was eating it but then he came over and i had him taste the serrano and he was like, oh my goodness. And he just kept pouring more on. Now, Serrano, when we talk about heat levels, um, there's a Scoville scale. That's what everything is, uh, when mm -hmm. it comes to peppers, a Scoville mm -hmm. scale is what they use. And right. so Habanero is like 750,000 on the Scoville scale, while the Serrano is about 100,000, mm. and maybe up to 300,000 roughly. And right. so there's a big difference in heat level, but if you put enough peppers, you can still achieve the right amount of heat. Right. And then again, with the lime and everything, it refreshes no. everything. You know? I'm not, I'm not going to lie. So it's the battle in my household. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I like the, I love the habanero. Like right. habanero for me on everything, rice, chicken, w whatever, just brings out the flavor. Now, mm -hmm. what I will say about the Serrano lime, which is, a, it is an amazing flavor. It really is. Mm -hmm. It tampers down, but I find with seafood, for me and my palate, it brings out the best in your seafood. Just, oh, yeah. it's amazing. But, you know, my wife and I, like, we've already, look, when we order, I just go straight to the habanero and I just pull it out. Like, look, don't touch it. Right, right. Don't My brother-in-law, right. he'll come over, you, you know, Tony, he'll come over. I'm like, no, look, and I know he orders from you, but like every time he runs out, I'm like, well, why do you come here first? <laughs> so, I'm going to say this as a, as a uh, friend of the family, <laughs> right? I've heard plenty of times about this sauce and this hot sauce and, you know, oh, oh got to try it. Right? Here we go. Here we but, go. Uh, <laughs> not once. <laughs> <laughs> here we go here we go <laughs> One time, Richard, and i'm just i'm just gonna speak to you <laughs> we are family i'm just gonna we're just gonna have a family meeting because i have heard about this sauce how delicious it is and and you know and about you and how amazing you are and you you know and we and this is our family and he came up so <laughs> Now, I've been look, here several look, times. Look, hold on, Lee, wait. That I was offered, uh, wait, I wait a minute. Was <laughs> 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 look, usually the times that you've come over, right. we've been out. Right. We've finished it. And, you, you know, can't offer you, you something that we don't have. Time, well, well, look, because my brother, look, my brother-in-law, he literally lives around the corner. Every right. time he runs out, it's not like I know he orders it from Rich. But before right. he orders it from Richie comes to the house, D, mm -hmm. I know y'all got I know y'all got some hot sauce in the cupboard. I'm like, bro, really? Well, I'm, you would think he would know that when he's running down to the last bottle, right? He should this place, place an order. order as opposed right, exactly. to coming over. <laughs> <laughs> but he knows if he forgets, he knows where to go. So he know he knows he's not going you know, he's not going to suffer for a while. Yeah, and, and my is turning now, right? <laughs> so um, I'll be ordering my order now mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. separately uh -huh. I'll, be, I'll be having a function soon at the house and, okay and i'm gonna get some of that um red hot they right. that's, what, that's what you put out for for guests 
You right. put the, right. You put that up for the gift. Right. Oh, that's what <laughs> <laughs> I got you, sis. I hear you. I hear you. All right. I'm gonna go, let me go dig in the closet because I know I think we got. I think we got we got some unopened in the closet. You gonna play yeah, like that? Because that line, um, that 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 I just seafood came to my head with that, and the, just the combination. I was like, hmm, yeah. while you were talking, listening, wow. That is a good combination. But, well, you know, Rich, you also, though, you know, don't forget, you still have one more that I know. Oh, yeah, we're, 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 we're going to talk about that one. Yeah, now, I, was... the, I don't have any to display to you, however. Okay. Well, hold on. Because it's seasonal. It ends up being seasonal. Yeah. What you get um, ready to is... go in the cloud? You get ready to go get your <laughs> Well, he said, let me, I, like, y- y'all keep talking. Let me go over okay. here. Let me see if I can find it. <laughs> okay, so. So the ne- the other the other flavor is is a seasonal flavor, and it's seasonal for a couple of reasons. Um, it's 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 the hottest one that I have, because you know when you put stuff together, when people a, a hot sauce enthusiast is always looking for real real hot stuff, yes. and that's why when they when they encountered my hot sauce, they were like, "Wow, this is tasty," but I wanted a little hotter, so I started trying to find the hottest peppers I could get. So I used the ghost pepper, which is used to be the hottest pepper in the world, and is no right. longer that. Right. Um, and then the Carolina Reaper is the hottest pepper in the world right now. Right. Some dude in South Carolina decided he was going to mess around with this stuff, and he started mess, mess, you know, putting them together. And he took the habanero and the and the uh, ghost and mixed them. The ghost is very hot. The habanero is hot but very flavorful. Perfect combination. So. That Carolina Reaper is really, really hot. On the Scoville scale, uh, well, again, you got to make it flavorful. Okay. It, it, it's got some good taste. The, the the pepper itself is tasty, but but it's so hot you really can't taste it. Mm-hmm. So it, it, you have to really blend the right items together with it mm-hmm. to keep the heat, mm-hmm. but enhance the flavor. Okay. And so that's what I tried to do. So I put together in my infinite wisdom and my crazy scientific, you know, <laughs> mad scientist <laughs> mind. <Just right. laughs> yeah, I started throwing stuff together and I put the habanero, the ghost, and the Carolina Reaper in one in one sauce. So when I threw them together and I started throwing stuff in to to kind of tame the heat somewhat, I came up with the perfect combination, and that's the new. That's the trio. I call it the Tico, Tico Rico trio because there's three different types of peppers in it, and so it is very, very hot, but super, that's, super flavorful. But super really, really flavorful. flavorful. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, I wanted it. To... Okay. I, I, I'm yeah. sorry. Sorry, Richard. I'm back. No. Feelings. Oh no, that's okay. okay. That's okay. okay. I understand. Now. <laughs> but yeah, so that's how the trio was born. And, you know, I put it together and I, I, I put it out there. And sure enough, it was it was just, it went crazy. People started buying it and they loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I started trying to find the peppers, the ghost and the Carolina Reaper. I could get the habanero anywhere all the time, he, especially here in California. Right. But But the ghost pepper is super expensive. The Carolina Reaper is super expensive and really hard to get. And so I started trying. I went online trying to find places and it was just too expensive. It, you know, and I and I don't want to gouge anybody. So if I had to buy it for the prices that they're asking, the amount I would have to ask for a bottle would, you know, would would seem way over the top. And right. then you start including shipping and handling and all that stuff. You know, nobody's gonna buy that because they're not gonna understand. You know, because right. most people don't understand all of what it takes to actually, right. you know, right. <laughs> make and ship things. And right. so I decided to grow my peppers. Hmm. So um, I put, uh, you know, we, 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 I bought some plants. I bought a ghost pepper plant. I bought a, uh, actually, the Carolina Reaper plant was given to me as a gift from one of my daughter's friends that worked at one of the coffee shops that she worked at close by. Wow. And when I when I got that pepper is when I started to decide to put all these peppers together. And so I decided, you know what, why don't I just grow them and see what happens next year? And sure enough, um, by August of the following year, I had a harvest. 
Mm -hmm. I put them together and I and I was able to come up with close to 200 bottles of that particular wow. sauce. Wow. And so it became, uh, you know, my limited edition sauce. Wow. So aside from it being, uh, you know, everything being, you know, fruit and vegetables in my sauce, that particular one, I grow the Carolina Reaper and the ghost myself. Wow. So it's a limited edition because, you know, you can only... Peppers are, are very temperamental and they like certain climates and, mm -hmm. and most of the hot peppers like heat. Mm -hmm. And so, although it's not very cold in California during the winter, um, it does not lend itself for, 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 for any kind of harvest because they don't grow very well during the winter. Mm -hmm. But um, so, yeah, so that's how I started doing that. And, and so I make my own, I, I grow my own peppers for that particular one. So that one is really special and you only get it you know, from October to December while supplies last because I have yeah, to yeah. see how the harvest um, goes. Look, and, you know, like, oh, this one right here is the fight. Now, this is the real right. fight. That's this right. This one right here, like you, this right here is really like a really special occasion. Like, right. we don't even really use this one unless it's a special occasion because it's so hard. Like you said, it's seasonal. <laughs> and, yeah, it this, is. and this yeah, one right here. You're not going to have any more until October right. again. Right. It might be a little <laughs> earlier depending. <laughs> October. Yes, every year around October is when I get my big harvest, and as soon as I harvest, I I, I put it into production immediately, okay. and I get it out on the market. So so it's typically I said October just because again it all depends on how the fruit or the plant does during its growth process for the right, you know right. from from around April to it takes about 120 days for mm -hmm. these particular peppers to to get to full maturity. And so so somewhere between April and August is when they 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 really get to maturity. And um and you know by September I can you know I can actually put the product out because it takes again the processing and the whole bottling and the whole deal. Right. Um so 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 it's a seasonal seasonal thing mm -hmm. and uh people love it. Um yeah. I'm also looking to add a couple of other flavors that people have been suggesting, you know, like I made a, I'm always, I'm always experimenting still with all the ones that I have now. I'll add different items to them. Like I made one recently that I put mango and, and, mm. um, and rosemary in, in the habanero. Mm. Okay. Mango and rosemary with the habanero mm. sauce. And that I'm sound, telling you right now. That sounds good. Make you, boy, I tell you, I put it on some food. Mm. It, it, it was finger licking good. So I'm working on getting the process to a point where I can market it, um, you know, put it out there as one of my flavors on the market. So, you know, it, again, it's a work in progress. So. Don't worry. Now, if you need some taste testers or whatever, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say your family. Can you, can you make room for the new? Right. You, right. You, I was going to say. Your family in Look, Virginia, you yeah. yes, you included. Yes, your you're family. part of the family now, yes. girl. So yes, no yes. worry. We'll, we'll, we'll be we'll be we'll be letting you know. Yes, we'll, absolutely. We'll definitely. get we'll get it out there to you so you can try definitely. it definitely. for sure. Absolutely. We're gonna... <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Absolutely. No, it's it's you know it's it's again it's work in progress as far as the the product is concerned. I'm always trying to you know enhance what we have. You know. Um, and, 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 you know, I don't want to have a hundred flavors because, you know, you go to a restaurant and you look at a menu and there's too many items on there. You get right. frustrated. Right. You know, I want to have enough to satisfy everybody, but, but not so much that it becomes crazy and overwhelming. Right. Right. I want the product to, to keep its integrity. Right. And if you go too far off and try to do 2,700 flavors, I don't believe that wouldn't work for me personally. And how my mind works right and so i'm thinking you know three four five flavors are going to be more than enough for me so i'm working on another we have three now so i'm working on one or two more but it has to be right for it to mm -hmm. blend in with the three that are quite successful right now as far as flavor and heat and all that is concerned so i'm i'm, I'm you know i'm always work in progress i'm always trying to add to it and uh as you said, Damon, whenever you want to, you, you got my address. You guys are welcome look, to come out and hang out, man. Look, and you we, haven't we, really tasted we, my stuff in a no, long, long, long time. No, that's what I'm saying. Time. We've talked about that. So you know that's on the calendar. We've right. talked, and we're going to we're gonna 
throw out three dates and we're gonna make that happen. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. It's been, a, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. It's a, it, um, I'm looking forward to that happening. So I, I'm gonna hold you to that now. You don't have to. You don't All have right to. now. All right. My word. It's right. It's well, thing. When when this airs, it's out there. So uh, All right. That's a beautiful <laughs> thing. And right. Like right, right, right. <laughs> so you know. As we move towards, you know, wrapping this up and, and mm-hmm. closing out this great episode, mm-hmm. I really, I don't know why, I just wanted to be off the wall with, with a, a random off the wall question. Sure. In your opinion, is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um. and you- you are New Yorker too, right? Right, yeah. See, that's you understand. Why, that's a loaded question. Yeah, you understand where I'm coming because I know. I look, I, but hey, he's a chef now, and uh, New York and all, I get it, but I gotta ask. Uh, you know what? If you're using the actual description of a sandwich, yes, it is okay. <laughs> you know, it's hurting them, it's, it's, hurting. it's, a, it's a type of meat, yes, inside <laughs> two pieces of bread. <laughs> okay, so so technically it's a sandwich. Okay. Uh, now, now, uh, you know what? I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to okay. say yes, it's a sandwich and leave it there. Because because I can go, uh, we could go forever. Cause, right, because I saw you. I saw yeah. you. I'm waiting for you to go ahead and, and go. And that question hurt his heart. Because yeah, it, it did. I know. I know it, it did. did. It's still hurting. <laughs> it, it's still hurting, you know. But, but, but technically, if I'm going to stay in the culinary realms, I guess, yes, it is because of what you describe as a sandwich. Okay, but, but hell no, it's not. <laughs> that's what I was. That's what I was waiting for. That's what I was waiting for. I know that's what he really wanted to say. I know he really wanted to say. <laughs> man, look, I, I appreciate you, my brother. I appreciate you, Rich, man. Oh, no, thank you. Taking time out your schedule, man, and sitting here and just really having some fun with us, man, and really highlighting what you're doing. Um, you know, it's it's amazing. Uh, I'm proud because I know you. I've known you, you know, for wow, uh, mm-hmm. oh, 28, 28 mm-hmm. years now, as long as I've yep. been with my wife and, yep. you know, we are family and I, I'm proud and anything we can do to continue to support you here on two mics up, you know, please let us know. Uh, you always have your home here. Um, and look forward to, you know, so much more from you. And before we go, can you please share with our listeners, you know, how they can, you know, get in touch with you, where they can find you, where they can get your amazing sauces. You're like, please share all that information. Absolutely. So if if you go to ltcorico.com, E-L-T-C-O-R-I-C-O.com, you can, um, you will find the website and it'll take you through all the processes and wherever you need to go to get all the different flavors, the pricing, the whole deal. And um, um, as we're doing this, um, I want to share a, a uh, discount code okay. for for you all and all your listeners and what have you. Um, right. If you use the word Gina, G I N A, I'm going to go with 15% discount Ooh. on your on your first order. I'm ordering right. as we speak. Okay. Yeah, G I N A um, is the is the discount code, and it'll give you 15% off your order. Oh, well, we, I'm yeah. going to run it. <clears throat> so we're going to so if I just want to make sure I got this right for you on the screen. You want us to use all our listeners and those who are watching mm-hmm. use code Gina G I N A and yep. that will give you a 15% discount on your order. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. So you all are have heard it here first, you're seeing it here first. Make sure you go out and support, you know, our friend, our brother uh, another small black owned business and Afro Latino out here doing things in the community, go out and support. Um, you know, this is really important that we get behind each other and really uh, show each other what, what it looks like to do business and to be successful together. Um, so I thank you, Rich, for sharing that uh, with us and our listeners. Lisa, my sister, anything before we go today? Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> you ordering? <laughs> I see. I see you ordering. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> um, 
I, I, you know, of course, of course, you know, I love talking culinary. I love talking food. And this was a great show because not only family, friend, um, long time, it's just like kindred spirit, I felt. Like we were just Absolutely. having a conversation, right? Absolutely. And so now I am seriously, like I was not playing. I'm playing <laughs> and um, I'm just going to say great show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I, I, I want to thank you guys for the, giving me the opportunity to, uh, you know, put my stuff out there. And Damon, you know, I love you, man. I appreciate you, my brother. Um, Lisa, it's been an absolute pleasure meeting your acquaintance. And uh, you know, Damon can tell you what I say, you know, what I say is what I mean. Yeah. Um, what you see is what you get with me. If I say something, I mean it. Yeah. Um, your family, as far as I'm concerned, any family of Damon is family of mine. And so um, thank you so much for the opportunity. I appreciate the fact that I could really, I felt that, 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 you know, camaraderie, that, that, that culinary thing that we have, that we share. <laughs> and so, um, that invitation is open to you as well. If you're ever in Southern California, make sure that you touch base because I want to I want to have you taste what I actually do when it comes mm -hmm. to, you know, food and not just sauce. So, you know. Right. Ain't I, nothing I, but a road know. trip. I know Lisa because, you know, once we thought they hit Lisa, you coming. Ain't nothing but right. a road trip. Listen, <laughs> that's right. You don't, listen, you don't have to tease me with a good time. By the time Damon and them get there, I'll be at the table. Like, <laughs> that, <laughs> my girl. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm talking about really appreciate you guys and i really appreciate the opportunity to again put the product out there and um you know um i, I want to talk to you damon uh, later on we'll talk about some sponsorship and stuff like that that i want to do course. With, course, with, with you know with uh two mics up and i wanted to thank you guys for what you do i've seen some of your shows and it's just awesome. It's great for the community. It's great for the black community, for the Afro Latino community, for all communities, actually, yeah, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's relegated to just us. Mm -hmm. I think it's 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 good enough to be spread across the world. And and I hope I hope it gets there and and people get to appreciate and enjoy what what I've been enjoying since uh, you know that you guys started with this. And again, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to be part of it. So well, thank you. It's been our pleasure. It's definitely yeah. been our pleasure. And, you know, again, we will be in touch. And before right. we before we go, uh, I just want to go ahead and again, let everybody know you can check out our sponsors, Next Level Keys, Riddick Entertainment, TD3 Insurance, uh, Regina Leggett. You know, we are here on two mics up to su support all small businesses, as Rico uh, Richard so eloquently stated. Uh, we are looking to expand, and this is about all businesses, not just black and brown. Uh, right. I want to thank our marketing and, and branding team at 94 Media House. Uh, we got a brand new shop at Two Mics Up. Feel free to go ahead and hit us up at twomicsup.com forward slash shop. Check it out. Help support the show. Like I said, continue to support small businesses, not only here in the DMV, but anywhere in your neighborhood. You know, we all are out here really trying to make a positive effort in the community. Feel free to follow Two Mics Up online at www.twomicsup.com. Follow us across social media, IG, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you can get notified every time Two Mics Up is doing something new. Lisa and I, is always, we're always up to something crazy. Stay tuned this Thursday. I got a feeling it's going to be another wild one. It's Pray for day. Wild. Bro. Yeah, pray for day might be the hashtag again this week, but y'all can see that right now. I made it through last week. I'll be back again with Lisa on Thursday. Y'all stay tuned. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed. Mike's out.